one that is done. Fabio Carvalho, yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah fab, finally. I mean, you know, again, it's one of my open secrets, really. That looked like one, didn't it, at the end of, end of January, start of Feb. It looked like Liverpool had sort of, you know, there'd been something agreed there. And the, the, the impression I got, or the information I got, was sort of, they were fine. They, they conducted themselves you know, properly. They, they probably could have really tried to force through that deal a bit more in January, but they were sort of comfortable with the idea that look, we, we've we've conducted ourselves well. We've 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 got the goodwill of the player, the age, and the, the Fulham, and we're confident that he'll he'll come to us. But they were happy to let him go and have a look elsewhere, you know. And fair play to him, you know. I don't think there's anything wrong with with him doing that and listening to what other people have got. I think there's been a bit of an agency um, change of hands or sort of a bit of um, I want to say confusion, but. Is that in terms I, of who's managing him? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, mean, I think George Mendes is, is pretty much involved there now. But, um, yeah, Liverpool are um, Liverpool are going to get him for next season. It looks like he's going to be a first-team player as well. It doesn't look like he's going to go out on loan. Um, although, you know, you never know if you, if you get him back for pre-season. But, it's, I mean, I think they can go up tomorrow, can't they? I think they'll, certainly over this weekend, they, they've got a chance of sealing promotion. And I expect once, once they do, which they are going to do, obviously, I think then we'll get the sort of official... Is that official bells and whistles? Because I was going to ask what what do you think has been the the delay? Like why now? Almost, you know, because yeah. that could have been done, as you say, you, that could have been done the day after the January transfer yeah, window. Yeah. It could be, it could have been I, left until for another for another six weeks or whatever. Yeah, until the I, season's suppose, finished. I suppose so. But I, th- I mean, I think I think the delay is that look, you know, we think we've got him, but he's he wants to see what's what's out there, which. Again, like Harvey Elliott done that when he left Fulham. You know, I think we've the famous story of him being at Real Madrid's training ground and pieing Sergio, uh, Sergio Ramos, wasn't it? He didn't want to didn't want to meet him. That's that's the story because <laughs> uh, of what he'd done to Salah. There's um, there's if you know, players like that are going to have people in the ear all the time saying, look, you know, and and there would have been some tempting offers, I'm sure. You know, look, coming to Liverpool is a dream move to you and I, but for a young player as well, it's also a daunting one. If you think, well, hang on, you know. I'm I'm sort of 19. I'm 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 really the star on the rise. Am I gonna just come in and sit on the bench for the year? You know, do I want to do that? I don't. I think he back. He'll back himself not to, and I think he'll back himself to play some games. Um, hopefully some big games over the over the next you know 12 months in particular. But it's a long term signing for Liverpool, and I think it's a it's an exciting one. He looks a good player. Well, is that thing where Liverpool being in for him and so publicly in for him? It, there's your due diligence done for a yeah. lot of other football clubs. Yeah, and when, yeah, yeah. You know, there's an opportunity there where I'm sure there'll be other been football clubs around the Premier League or Europe as well. Because that was one of the issues, yeah. wasn't it? It was the because you of the can tribunal move for, for, for like minimal fee, basically. I think about half a million, isn't it? I think. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, Liverpool, Liverpool's. You know, as much as we big up Liverpool, or the more we big up Liverpool's scouting and recruitment, the more it's either copied or or just used you know in terms of that I think I think we've seen that in the past I think Arsenal was sort of probably a, a, a forerunner for that with with their sort of French and, 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 and French speaking African scouting in, in, in the 90s under Wenger I think that was when they lost their competitive advantage almost it was when people went well we can get these players out of Marseille and PSG and you know wherever else so that was probably um, that's just the, the price the price on the ticket but I think Liverpool had done all the work that they needed to do felt you know they knew the player was good enough. They knew the player wanted to come. They knew the sort of the Fulham were the relations were good between the two clubs. I know they had the Elliott situation, but Nico Williams going there, obviously Harry Wilson did going there last last um, summer. So uh, everything was in place, and yeah, looking forward to see Fabio Calv. Where do you th- where do you think he fits in? Because you've always mentioned there he'll he'll come into the first team squad. Yeah, but we I mean we having a bit of debate over because he played he's been playing. Tennis, yeah, for, well, for full <laughs> tennis. Is that like Sean Connery? <laughs> 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 um, um, yeah, I, I, um, I sort of. The more I look at it, I think is it an ox, an ox sort of replacement. You know, as, as in, I don't, I don't mean like to do, do exactly the job he does, but sort of to take just to take his place in the squad. You know, mm-hmm. the more you sort of, the more you saw that with. Um, with Elliot last season when you saw him playing in midfield you thought oh, okay that makes sense now what Liverpool are trying to do with, with Elliot I think maybe that might be one you know I'm, I'd be surprised if Ox doesn't want to leave Liverpool because I mean again he didn't get even get on last night I don't think he played that played Forest this last time he, he played any minutes and he was taken off early and that wasn't happy he doesn't feel to me like he he's going to 
have a massive part to play. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe, maybe he surprises everyone, but it doesn't feel like he's going to have a massive part to play in this running, um, unless it all goes wrong, and then you sort of you, you you fulfill and leave fixtures just to get through to the Champions League final, potentially something like that. But um, yeah, so maybe he'll do that. You know, the hybrid sort of sometimes plays wide, sometimes plays as an eight in midfield. Maybe sometimes. Liverpool don't really play with a 10 but maybe sometimes if they do try and play a diamond or something like that then maybe he plays in there It did get me thinking watching Liverpool City at the weekend and just how you know setups are not massively dissimilar in terms of overall formation or what have you but they just seem to have a just particularly midfield a slightly more more attacking player yeah, more technically yeah, yeah. gifted and, and could he be an example of that where he's the next evolution in what Liverpool yeah, are possibly. looking to do. Well, you look at, there could be three or four of them, couldn't it? There could be like Elliot, there could be him, Curtis, Thiago, I think is is, is a huge step in that that direction, isn't he? You know, he was, it's no coincidence that he was Liverpool's best player in that game, in my opinion, you know, it was made made for him, someone who's reliable on the ball, who, who, who takes it under pressure. There was a great, I don't know if you've seen the compilation, it was like two minutes of him doing the same turn in in, in his whole career. And it's just that one, you, you'll know where it. He where steps towards He goes to go that goes way and then goes that way yeah. and, and he spins past someone. And it's just two minutes solid of that. And it's, it's mesmeric, you know, it's just, you watch it, just go, he's done it again. Look, look, watch this. He's going to, yeah, he's done it again. But I think, yeah, I think maybe that is the next step of Liverpool's evolution is just to, you know, to have the, the fire and the thunder but also to have the fire and the thunder with that, you know, Bernardo Silva is a good example of that, I think, isn't he, in terms of, you know, there's not many more competitive players than him, but at the same time, you know, his touch is always perfect. He he is, you can give him the ball in a telephone box, as people would say, and, you know, I think Liverpool are, I think they have been edging that way. Uh, I've got even Cater as a, another example, isn't he, of, of someone who, who, if you can get him on the pitch and keep him on the pitch, he can, he can add that to your game. So yeah, I think that I think I, I don't think it's any coincidence the type of you know Diaz is is, is another one really who's you know for all that for all that his his weight rate and his endeavour is is huge. His first touch is absolutely incredible as yeah. well, and you know the reliability of that I think is is something Liverpool really are placing value on. I thought it was interesting you mentioned Bernardo Silva in that because you, you you're right you know his. Thiago, Sil uh, Thiago Alcantara is, is analogue in how the Liverpool midfield and yeah. City midfield sort of lined up but there's a guy who's was a winger or yeah, he's, yeah, you know, yeah. he's a front three player yeah. but he plays in a the luxury three. player you, yeah. you would have said maybe a, a while back and now all yeah. of a sudden he's effectively in a two man yeah. midfield De Bruyne is another one you know, yeah. like, I think it's underrated what how, how sort of physically good De Bruyne is in the game You know the way he can drive forward you know he's I don't think people sort of associate him with pace but he when he runs with the ball, he's 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 massively sort of you know tough to stop, and he's strong, and he he's got he's got you know real power in 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 his upper body, and I think yeah, there's, there's a lot of um Liverpool have got a, I think Liverpool's midfield is is under is over criticised at times, but I think if you do look at where it's understocked, I think it's probably in that that department of I think Liverpool is is probably seventy percent sort of. Power and endeavour and and press and and thirty percent technique. Whereas cities is probably sixty forty yeah. the opposite way. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And, and you know, another thing that was mentioned to us is that there's a slight potential because you always you tend to find that Liverpool get a player and they move him back a row. Yeah, you know, yeah. unless they're an absolute superstar. And the fact that he's already playing the ten, you can't imagine he's going to move forward one. Yeah. But there is that other thing again. Just to it, it, and it, I don't know that Liverpool are looking to be more Man City ish or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But when you consider what they have got, that Liverpool are going more and more towards is that fluidity. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. less specialists. Yeah. It's more guys who can do everything. No one would have looked at Phil Foden and said, he'll be a false nine for Man City, <laughs> but there's games where he plays false nine and yeah, he's Sterling, sensational. Sterling, Sterling, Sterling one. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, Bernardo Silva, but, yeah. De Bruyne. God, we've, seen, we've seen a lot of those, haven't we, with City? Um, but yeah, you're right. Like Liverpool have moved back. What like Curtis has moved out of the a front three. Coutinho sort of did it before that, didn't he? Um, Ox... Elliot now I think you know I've, I've I've spoken to people I mean very early in his career so let's not sort of put this as hard and fast but I've heard people say Kate Gordon can play as an eight if if you need him to we've seen even in the academy you've seen people like James Balagese sort of move sort of as a wide left player he he seems to be playing now more as a a sort of a wine Aldemy type midfielder who, who you know does all of the nuts and bolts of the yeah. game as well so I think there are you know there are um, Similarities and differences between the way City approach it, but I think the sort of the one thing that you just is, is uniform is just get good footballers in your team, and the more you get in your squad, the better you're going to look 
whatever system you play. And the good thing about this is that Liverpool have effectively now boxed two of their summer yeah, bits of transfer yeah, business yeah. already. Diaz in January and now and young, Carvalho. And yeah. the tw- you've got a 19 year old and a 25 year old there. So, you know, you're, you're looking at Touchwood, obviously, no injuries and things like that. But you're looking at sort of three or four seasons minimum where you can say, well, look, they're, they're going to be part of our plans. And we'll see how they get on, obviously. But you know, it takes a lot of pressure off, and and not a, not a huge fee for, for. I mean, Diaz is a big fee, but it's not. It looks it looks a more than fair fee. Carvalho could be a bargain, and you know, what's it, eight million pretty much it, it, all in. What is it? Is it five? Five plus nearly three, basically, in, in add-on. So yeah, you're looking at that. I mean, you look at what they've. <laughs> full full and one. Thank you for it, but you look at what they've had Elliot and um, and Carvalho out of. It's it's Harry Wilson, isn't it? You know, yeah, it, uh, it's. Take that, you know, and no disrespect to Harry, but no, no. you look, you Harry, but <laughs> um, but you're looking at um, you're looking at the, the potential value for the first team at Liverpool. Yeah, it's 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 night and day, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for checking out that clip from Jano Insight this week. The full show is streaming now on Red Men Plus, where we also discuss the future potentially of Joe Gomez, the latest on Divock Origi, the fallout from the Champions League, and Liverpool being linked with a centre half in Gleeson Bremer, and what that could mean for the future transfer business of the club. Uh, Jano Insight is every single Thursday on Red Men Plus. Head over to redmenplus.com, sign up, and get that full show and loads more incredible Liverpool streaming content.